seen on high, every mountain stream, every sunset sky, but my one request, Lord, my only aim, is that you reign in me again, Lord, reign in me, reign in your power, over all my dreams, in my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? Over every thought, over every word, may my life reflect the beauty. All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another night of matters of the heart lessons from first samuel it is the 20th of may and i am thrilled that you are here with us this evening i'm going to tell you that we are winding down uh, last week we looked at uh, the heart of the willing this is where david was chosen to be the next king in the future uh, he would replace saul in time and tonight we're looking at the heart of a champion, which is the story of David and Goliath, my favorite story in 1 Samuel, uh, for some various reasons, which I will share with you in a few minutes. And then next week on the 27th, uh, we're going to look at the heart of friendship, uh, because immediately after David kills Goliath, he's going to form a friendship with Saul's John, son's Jonathan. And we're going to look at that friendship story a little bit next week to close us out. And then... Uh, we will be in the Fellowship Hall beginning in June for our summer series. Uh, Lance Bennett from the Fairlane Church of Christ will be our first speaker on June the 2nd at 6.30. Um, and we will not do a virtual recorded, pre-recorded class. Uh, we may or may not live stream the summer series. We'll let you know that in the coming days. Uh, but um, hopefully the majority of you have gotten your shots and, and you can come if you want to be a part of our summer series, come there. And then, uh, as I said, we, we may still uh, stream for those that are unable to, but we'll we'll see. We'll see how that goes. We've got some things to figure out between now and then, uh, but we'll do that. So thanks for being here tonight. Thanks for um, being here throughout this series. And uh, we've got, uh, like I said, this week and next week to go. Uh, let me leave us in prayer real quick before we begin tonight's lesson. Father God, thanks for loving us and giving us this opportunity to study this evening. Open our hearts and minds to your word, and we thank you, Father, for the story that we're going to look at tonight. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so tonight as we talk about matters of the heart, we're going to look at the heart of a champion. And that's going to come from 1 Samuel chapter 17. Uh, do you like a good underdog story? I do. I love underdog stories. And I think that, uh, you know, all of my life, I have um, been a huge sports fan. Uh, I played sports growing up. I have coached for many, many years. Uh, I watch a lot of sports, uh, either on the television or uh, even in person live. Uh, I've held season tickets to the University of Tennessee football games. Uh, in the past, I've gone to uh, Major League Baseball games. I've been to a Predators game. Um, you know, love uh, to go over to MTSU and watch the uh, Blue Raiders and Lady Blue Raiders play basketball. So I've been to been to a lot of sporting events, and I've been to a lot of venues, and, and I love sports for many, many reasons. Uh, one of the reasons I love sports is because you come to expect the unexpected. And in sports, there are great underdog stories. Great underdog stories where, uh, you know, the team that has the most talent, that has the best record, uh, that looks unbeatable versus a team that isn't as talented, isn't as impressive, isn't as strong, and yet somehow they win. Um, remember just a few years ago, I don't quite remember the year sitting here off the top of my head, but remember a few years ago, MTSU made it to the NCAA tournament, and they were a 15 seed in the region that they were in out of 16 teams. And being a 15 seed meant they had to play the number two seed. And the two seed was Michigan State. 
And Michigan State is a perennial power. They've been to multiple Final Fours. Uh, they have won the national championship. They're coached by a legendary coach named Tom Izzo. And typically, uh, the first two versus 15 game, the first round game for that two seed is a walk in the park. They're usually not close. Uh, usually they're 10, 15, 20, 25 point victories. A lot of times they're 20, 25 point victories. Uh, because typically, you know, a, a two versus a 15, uh, the two's going to win just about every time. Uh, in, in the following years, uh, there was a 116 matchup where the 16 seed won. And that was the first time ever that a 16 had beat a one in the NCAA tournament. And, and when you see the underdog team win, uh, it just does your heart good because. It wasn't expected. Um, it's something they'll never forget. The celebration is is phenomenal. You know, when a, when a two beats a 15, like if Michigan State would have beat MTSU, the celebration that day would have been minimal because everybody expected Michigan State to win. But when MTSU won, you know, the celebration was incredible. This town went nuts. You know, this town couldn't stop talking about the Blue Raiders. Um, you know, so... Uh, underdog stories are great. And there are underdog stories in life that have nothing to do with sports that are great. We enjoy underdog stories. And there is an underdog story in Scripture. And that underdog story is David and Goliath. And we're going to look at 1 Samuel chapter 17 tonight. And again, we're not going to take time to read the whole thing. Uh, the overwhelming majority of you who watch this, probably everybody that watches this on Wednesday night is probably familiar with the story of David and Goliath. So I'm going to walk you through chapter 17 and tell you some of the story. And you can read this through 17 uh, to verify what I'm saying. But Saul is still king. David is still a shepherd boy. He is still the son of Jesse. Uh, and in chapter 16, we know he's been chosen to be king in the future, but, but David is still a young man, and he is a small boy. Uh, he is uh, a good and nice appearance. He's ruddy, but he's a small boy. As a matter of fact, uh, a lot of people, a lot of Bible theologians uh, speculate that David might have been around five foot tall at this particular moment in his life. Uh, so still pretty small boy, and he was stuck tending sheep. His three oldest brothers are in Saul's army. And remember last week, we looked at the first brother, uh, Eliab, who Samuel, when he was first prayed in front of him, Samuel said, this is probably the guy the Lord's chosen. And the Lord said, no, I don't look at his appearance. Well, he and two of his other brothers are in Saul's army, and they are now in battle again with the Philistines. The Philistines have been thorns in their side in the book of 1 Samuel. And they are back in battle with the Philistines. And at this particular moment in the battle, there is a Philistine giant named Goliath. And Goliath, the Bible says, was over nine feet tall. Again, most scholars believe he was about nine feet, nine inches. And he would come out every single day and he would basically taunt the Israelites. He would challenge the Israelites. He would ask them to send out a warrior you know, send out someone for him to fight because if he sends, they send out somebody to fight, Goliath is going to demolish them very quickly. And the Israelites were scared. They were terrified. They knew they had nobody in their army. They knew they had nobody in their camp that could be successful and overcome and defeat Goliath. Something that I find interesting here. Remember multiple times in the book of 1 Samuel, Saul is in hiding. Uh, when, the, when he's chosen to be king, he's hiding in the baggage. Uh, when, Jonathan, uh, uh, when Jonathan and the, the armor bearer go and um, fight the Philistines, Saul is off hiding again. Well, now we're in 1 Samuel 17 and the Israelites are hiding from Goliath. They're not challenging Goliath. They're letting him come out and rant and rave every day. He's throwing insults. He's hurling uh, demeaning language toward them. Uh, he's begging somebody to come out uh, so that he could kill them. Uh, he taunts them with his words. Um, you know, he, say, he tells them what he's going to do, you know, with their carcasses. 
once he kills them. And they're hunkering down. They're cowering. Uh, they're much like their leader, Saul, in so many ways. Well, this happens every day, the Bible says, in 1 Samuel 17. Every day, every day, Saul, uh, Goliath comes out and taunts the people of Israel. And David is tending the sheep of his father back in Bethlehem. And David, the future king, is going to be used as a gopher. Uh, Jesse's going to send some supplies to David's brothers who are on the front line of this battle, and David is going to show up in the camp from time to time and give the uh, the brothers and the Israelites the supplies that Jesse has sent. And on this particular day that David is sent, Goliath comes out when David is there. And Goliath begins to make all of his insults. Everything he's done every day, he's challenging somebody, um, he, he wants somebody to come fight him and nobody will. David sees him and David says, well, what's going to be given to this guy that defeats Goliath? What's going to be given to the person that defeats Goliath? And of course they, they answer that question. And by the way, his brothers are mocking him. One of his brothers says, why have you come here? You know, we, we basically said, we don't like you. Why have you come down here? What'd you do with those few sheep you're, you're tending uh, that's in verse 27 or so, 27, 28. Uh, why did you leave those few sheep in the desert? I know you're conceited. How wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. You're a spectator. Why did you come down here? And David says, well, what, what's going to be given to the person that takes this guy out? And they answer that question. So David says, well, I'll fight him. <laughs> I'll fight him. Now, remember a few minutes ago, I told you that Goliath is nine feet, nine inches, and David is five feet. Now, if you're looking for an underdog story, you think you found one, right? Uh, at first glance, the underdog story here is that Goliath is nine feet, nine, and David is around five feet, and there's no way a five-foot person is going to take out a nine-foot, nine giant. Uh, nobody else is willing to fight this guy. David's not the one to do it. The underdog is David. The overwhelming favorite is Goliath. That's how we would view this story initially. I'm going to challenge you to view it differently in a few minutes. But you know the rest of this story, if you've read it. David says, well, I'll fight him. And they finally agree to let him fight Goliath. And we know that Saul comes and says, all right, we've got we to gotta put the armor on you. And Saul takes his armor and he puts it on David and it just it just envelops him. It just swallows him whole. And David says, look, I can't fight in this. Just let's take all this off. Let me just go do what I got to do. And, and we know that David goes and prepares for this battle. And David's weapons are five stones and a slingshot. That's it. You know, Goliath comes out with a big sword. Goliath comes out in full armor. David comes, as we know, with, you know, five stones and a slingshot. And the battle is ready to begin. Now, we know what happens in this story. We know that David is going to take one stone and he's going to fling it out of that slingshot and that's going to hit Goliath in the head and it's going to kill him. He's going to fall. And then we know that David's going to stand over him, take the sword of Goliath and chop his head off. <laughs> and we know that story. But before we get there, and before we kind of think it through, I want you to see this text, because this is the most important part of this whole story, in my opinion. And it's what I want to focus on today. And, and by the way, it changes the underdog story. This verse changes the underdog story. And I'll tell you what I mean by that in just a couple of minutes. So again, in 1 Samuel 17, 45-47, David and Goliath are face to face. Goliath is laughing. <laughs> nine foot nine giant looking at this little scrawny five foot kid. And Goliath has to be thinking to himself, is this the best you got? Are you kidding me? This is, this is a piece of cake. Uh, this is not even a challenge. Um, but Lynn, listen to what David says to the Philistine giant. He said, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin. David says, you've got all the weapons. You come at me with sword. You come at me with a spear. You come at me with a javelin. But I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. 
This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. Now I want to go back to this text. David says, you come at me with all the right weapons if you want to win a battle in the physical realm, in the physical sense. You've got your sword, you've got your spear, you've got your javelin, but I'm coming to you and I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies, you have defied them. I'm coming in the name of the Lord. And then David does what I think is the first example of trash talking ever recorded, <laughs> at least in scripture when it comes to this kind of battle. David basically says, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to strike you down. I'm going to cut off your head. And I'm going to give your carcasses, your carcass and every carcass of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals. And everybody's going to know that there is a God in Israel. He's talking trash. I love that about David. <laughs> David just looks right at the Philistine. He says, first of all, I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. You come at me with all these weapons, but I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. And because of that, today I'm going to kill you. I'm going to cut your head off. And I'm going to feed your carcass to the animals. Pretty bold. Pretty, pretty bold. Uh, pretty impressive language. Well, here's what I want you to see. This whole time, in all of our upbringing, we have probably thought that David was the underdog of this story. In reality, Goliath was the real underdog. Now, as we look at this from a worldly perspective, we see David as the underdog. He's five foot. He's fighting the nine foot nine giant. Uh, he's a shepherd boy. He's not a warrior. He's never been in battle. He's never, he's never killed anybody like this before. All of the brave warriors, all of the armies of Saul, they're, they're terrified. They're hunkering down. They're cowering. David is tending sheep. David is a gopher. He's bringing supplies to the front lines to his brothers. David, in a physical sense, in a real-world story, if this were playing out in Hollywood, if this was playing out on a sports court, uh, if this was playing out in our real world, everybody says Goliath is the overwhelming favorite. If there were odds on this in Vegas, the odds would be stacked on Goliath. But because David came against Goliath in the name of the Lord, because the Lord was on David's side, Goliath was the real underdog because no one can defeat the God of Israel. No one can defeat our God. No one can defeat my God and your God. And if God is for us, the book of Romans says, who could be against us? And that's what David knew. David knew that he came in the name of the Lord. He knew that the Lord was on his side. Remember when he was chosen to be king in the previous chapter, the spirit of the Lord came upon David and made him powerful. And David knows it. David feels it. David trusts it. He's committed to it. And he knows that if he will go fight this Philistine giant with God on his side, there's no way David can lose. So maybe you thought all of your life that David was the underdog. But in reality, Goliath is the real underdog because Goliath cannot defeat the God of Israel. If this were just a story of David and Goliath, yeah, Goliath is going to win. Goliath is the favorite. David is the underdog. But it's not the story of David versus Goliath. It's the story of Goliath versus David and his God. And David and his God are going to win 
every single time. Now let me make an application as we get ready to close here in just a couple of moments. God is on your side. God is on my side. With the right faith in God, there's nothing we can't do. Now I'm not saying that he's going to give us miraculous powers to to uh, do miraculous things. I'm not saying that. But what, what I am saying and what I am teaching and what I believe is biblical is that with the proper amount of faith, we can do anything we set our minds to here on earth. We want to overcome a temptation. We have that power. We want to be a faithful witness of God. We have that power. We want to speak into very difficult situations. We have that power. We have a tragic circumstance in our life. We want to overcome it. We have that power. You see, with faith in God, all things are possible, the scripture says. And if God is on our side, we're never the underdog. We're always the favorite. So I guess there's a couple of questions I would ask you tonight, and that is, first of all, do you have God on your side? If you're watching this and, and you're not a Christian, you're fighting your battles by yourself. You might be fighting an addiction alone. You might be struggling in a relationship alone. You may have financial difficulties alone. You may have health difficulties that you're fighting alone. But you can change that by being a child of His. And if you're listening to this tonight and you have a question, okay, what do I need to do to become a follower of Jesus? Please reach out to me. Let me share that with you. Let me share the good news of Jesus. Let me share His call to repent and confess and to be baptized. Let me encourage you not to walk through this life alone. Because if you're walking through this life alone, the world's going to look at you and say, you're the, you're the underdog. Because life's going to win. Because life's hard. It's tough. It's the nine foot nine giant. It's Goliath. But when you walk with the Lord on your side, the world and life, they become the underdogs. You become the favorite. You become the champion. Because you and the Lord can accomplish anything and everything that you want to accomplish. We thought of this story as David is the underdog, when in reality Goliath is. We look at our world and we think the world's the favorite. The world has a lot going for it. The world is powerful. Satan is powerful. But when we're on the Lord's side and he's with us and we have the indwelling Holy Spirit, we are the favorite. We're not the underdog in this story anymore. So my challenge to you tonight is to follow the God of Israel. Follow the God of the church. Surrender yourself to Jesus. Trust in the indwelling Holy Spirit. And don't be an underdog in this world. Because with you and Jesus, with you and the Lord, with you and God, with you and the Holy Spirit, all things are possible. Have the heart of a champion because God has made you a champion when he rescued you from sin. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for helping us have the heart of a champion and helping us by rescuing us from sin. We thank you, Father, for the story of David and Goliath. And we thank you that while the world looks at Goliath as the overwhelming favorite, we know that with you on David's side, David is the overwhelming favorite and Goliath is the underdog. Thank you for David's courage. Thank you for his heart of a champion. May we be courageous. May we be champions for you. And may we do what you call us to do. For those that may not have that heart, Father, that may not be on your side, help us to reach out to you and to know what to do. Help us to ask somebody. Help us to let individuals come to us for assistance and for help. Most of all, Father, help us all to be like Jesus today. Forgive us if we don't. Thank you again for this time of study and bless each person here tonight. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for coming. I appreciate uh, tremendously the opportunity to uh, teach here virtually. And I hope it's been beneficial to you. Next week on the 27th of May, this will be our last uh, 
class, we will look at the heart of friendship, the story of Jonathan and David. So I'm going to go ahead and put the matters of the heart slide up and play Lord Rain and Me. You guys have a great night. We'll see you next time. Thank you. And God bless. Every mountain stream, every sunset sky, but my one request, Lord, my only aim, is that you reign in me again. Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again?